Leslie Cornwell here, Midwifery Business Consultation. Um, I want to talk to you about the four quadrants of cash flow. Um, I think they're very, very powerful. Robert Kiyosaki has wrote many great books since part of my early mentorship down this rabbit hole of financial freedom, empowering midwives to think to the next level of how can we access more women. Um, so with the cash flow quadrants, there's four categories of how you can make money in today's society. You can can do it as a W-2 employee. It's the hardest way to make money. It has the most taxes to it as far as there's not a lot of write-off deductions that you can utilize. Um, so it tends to be how most middle class, lower class um, people in our society today make their money. They exchange their time every two weeks. They get a salary or a paycheck based on exchanging that direct hourly rate. So that's most people, but we challenge you to think about these other quadrants. There is self-employed. Um, it tends to be a lot of midwives. It's still a very hard way to make money because now you're doing it on your own terms. You're still exchanging your own time for money, but you're doing it in your mission, your value. You make your office schedule. You determine how many hours you work to exchange for those funds. This is the highest tax bracket. Um, it tends to be a lot of midwives, private medical practices, doctors, um, lawyers, attorneys, those kind of things, accountants. Um, and so, yes, you may make lots of money because you're exchanging your time. If you're willing to work 80 hours versus 40 hours, you're gonna make double the amount of money compared to somebody's salary under a company's job description umbrella of what they signed up for. But those are the two hardest ways to make money. So I really like to challenge midwives and birth professionals, how can we create the businesses? How can we become a business owner versus self-employed? How can we become investors? How can we become where we're thinking and our mindset is return on investment? Anytime somebody brings a proposal to you, anytime there's an opportunity, the cost of something, you're always in your mind thinking what's the return on investment for that payment? The payment of my time, the payment of my my currency that I've worked so hard, that money, those dollar bills, my relationships. What what are you exchanging to get those funds? So for business owners and investors, it's the easiest way to make money. It's definitely a learning curve. It's definitely training, knowledge, education. It's a different way of thinking. We're not taught in school to be business owners and investors in high school, in college. Um, even people will talk to me, well, I thought about getting my business degree and I stress the challenge of business owners don't typically get a business degree a business degree is typically to a CEO the person that's going to run the business owners business so it's a very different thought process the business planning the funding the leadership skills the professional development you're wanting to create systems you're wanting to create businesses that help out midwives birth professionals women in your community and around the country that will run very successfully if you're out of the picture. You can choose to be part of your practice, you can choose to catch babies, but if all of a sudden you want to walk away for a month, month and a half, is the practice gonna be successful without you there? Have you created the policies? Have you created the, the systems, the, the, the training modules, the opportunities of figuring out challenges and problems without you directly being in it. Have you created this amazing team? Do you have a mastermind group of an amazing accountant, a lawyer, um, a planner, a consultant, people on your team that you go to to help solve problems versus you have to figure out all the solutions. So that's a big shift between self-employed and business owner. There's a ton of tax benefits for being a business owner versus self-employed. Um, investors and business owners tend to have the most tax deductions. We joke in the real estate investing world, especially rentals long term. On paper, on your tax forms, it looks like you're in poverty. You could apply for food stamps. You could 
could apply for practically anything, um, business owners and rental property managers, um, investors have the lowest tax brackets out of everyone. Many of them pay nothing in taxes because of all the deductions and the value. And our government is set up that way. It's not that they're taking advantage of anything that you don't have access to. There's a need, there's a service the government felt was a higher value for the private sector to commit to. So by having rental properties, by being a business owner, you can in increase your success in life the lower the taxes, which is the most expensive thing you'll ever pay for in your entire life. And you're gonna be able to serve more families. If we're self-employed and I have a solo home birth practice, you're only gonna be able to serve the six, eight ladies a month that your time can be exchanged for. But if you now set up a system, you have multiple offices, you have a team underneath of you, your practice is now going to be serving a lot more families based on the structure you've created versus you exchanging your time for money. So I wanna challenge midwives, I wanna challenge birth professionals, how do we keep high quality care creating business systems, creating investor investment opportunities that will give you that financial freedom. And then you can really have some of your practices, your nonprofits, your fun projects completely can give to the community that you may not have been able to do in the past.